you are going to die a sinful, horrible human creature. What is sin? There's a few different ways you can define it. I think the simplest way to define what is sin is it is anything that goes against God's will or is outside of God's will. Sin could be me going and taking a job that God doesn't want me to have, but it could also be committing adultery or, or murder. There's a lot of different sin in the world, and while they all have different consequences for us here on Earth, obviously murdering someone has a lot more consequences than me stealing a pencil, but the reality is God is a completely perfect and just being. And so he can't even be in the presence of the guy that stole the pencil. Like I said, sin is anything that's outside of God's will. And what it does is it separates us from God. From what I understand, sin breaks your fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. And so I hear a lot of people saying like, uh, if you die in your sins, then you cannot be saved. But what happens when you're a Christian, you put your faith in Jesus Christ and you're falling into some sin and then you die. What happens there? What's the formula there? We're all going to die having sinned five minutes before we die. Okay. There is no way for a human being to be without sin, we are going to have done something that God wouldn't have had us do at all times, as far as I'm concerned. I again, they're going to be less and less consequential, but nobody is living perfectly within God's will. That is not something that, as a Christian, you should be too concerned about. You are going to die a sinful, horrible human creature, but what's going to happen is God is going to account Jesus' righteousness to you. What does baptism mean? What me and Austin believe about baptism is that it is a an external sign of of us joining the community of the faithful. So there are other traditions, especially the Catholic tradition, that say that it actually plays a role in your salvation and that you're not, in a sense, you're not fully saved without being baptized. Uh, that's not what Austin and I believe. We believe that you can be fully and completely saved just by a proclamation of your faith in Jesus Christ. When we think about baptism, there's really two different baptisms that are mentioned in the Bible. There's the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit by fire, and there's baptism by dunking in water here on earth. The dunking in water here on earth is a symbol of the baptism that happens in heaven the minute a sinner repents and turns to Jesus Christ. Every single Christian has been baptized by the Holy Spirit and fire when they accept Jesus. Not every Christian will ultimately be dunked or sprinkled with water, uh, but that's not necessary. It's a command that we're supposed to go do. We should want to be water baptized if we are a Christian, but it's not something that you need to immediately go do in order to be saved and go to heaven. One example that we see of somebody who was saved that did not get baptized was the thief on the cross simply because he didn't have the opportunity to he was nailed to a cross but when he recognized that Jesus was the Messiah and he was his Lord on the cross he asked Lord remember me when you come into your kingdom and Jesus replied surely I tell you today you will be with me in paradise it can be applied to you we can learn from different scripture that we see and different examples that we see thief on the cross is a good example of somebody who did not get baptized but is in fact saved exactly. so I wonder how Catholic reconcile that Bye.